Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, we're going to look at three interesting topics. The first is a creative glitch attack against AMD Secure Encrypted Virtualization. Next, we'll look at a great blog post on finding a privileged escalation in a DJI drone controller. And finally, a bulletin from the NYPD Intelligence and Counterterrorism Bureau on the Flipper. I didn't make it up. Now, this paper is called One Glitch to Rule Them All. It's by some guys at the Technische Universität in Berlin, and it's on AMD Secure Encrypted Virtualization. Basically, these processors, these AMD processors, are used in cloud environments, cloud computing environments, and they'll run a hypervisor and a bunch of virtual machines. The hypervisor is like the baseline bare metal engine and then runs a bunch of virtual machines on top of that. The idea behind this processor is that these virtual machines can all run and the hypervisor or a person who has physical access to the computer won't be able to see anything because everything's encrypted. And so even a malicious actor, someone running the hypervisor, couldn't take a look at what's going on with these virtual machines. It's protected by an AMD secure processor. Spoiler alert, turns out uh, they found a way around the secure part. Now the security processor is the root of trust. It has the keys to everything. All the encryption keys, everything that's being managed on this is handled by this security processor. Now the paper is very in depth. There's a ton of information in there about all the different attacks and how they went about it and like a ton of sources. But the part that's the most interesting is how they glitched this processor. So they managed to dump the firmware out of it and they can load in their own firmware and they can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. But the glitch attack itself is usually done, like when you see glitch attacks against voltage lines, you'll always see the word crowbar. A crowbar circuit was used, an FPGA and a crowbar, something else in a crowbar. The chip whisperer has a crowbar circuit that's in it that's used to cut the voltage. So usually you attach this to the voltage rail that the chip is running on and it, it basically kind of crowbars, it jams it down to ground very for whatever time you pick basically and then it comes back up now what's really cool about the glitch these guys did is that they didn't use any crowbar circuit at all what they did is used a teensy to interface to the power supply controller that's running on the motherboard and they reverse engineered the protocol that's used the protocol is an svi2 and they were able to send their own commands to the voltage controller and generate the glitch using the power supply and everything that's on the motherboard. They did it by sending two successive commands, one to drop the voltage and another one shortly after before the voltage could fall all the way to bring it back up. I thought it was a really cool way of going about a glitch without having to solder on a bunch of extra hardware and try to pull down a line that might have a bunch of capacitance on it or other things. It's, it's sometimes challenging to use a crowbar circuit. Now the DJI Smart Controller. Willem has a great blog post that runs through how he found a vulnerability in this drone controller and exploited it. It walks you all the way through all the steps from initial discovery to connecting to this device. It runs Android 7.0, connecting into a shell, but with just user access, not root privileges. And you know, we all want root privileges. So in his blog post, he goes about the steps of how he got root access. It's real interesting. He, he shows you at first just how he went through the system and looked for things. And he found a binder service. And so in one of the, the binder services was a, a thing called DJI Link. And so what he was looking for is, is there a program that's running that he could perhaps open up in Ghidra and take a look at? So DJI Link is running as a binder service. So it has privileged access, and perhaps there's a way to exploit this application. He gets a copy of all the, the files that are on this device from, and I kid you not, Dank Drone Downloader, where apparently you can go and download all these different images of firmware on drones. And he goes through a few steps to figure out how to actually get the files out of it. But once he does, he pulls this DJI Link file out, he opens it up in Ghidra, and he starts looking for what's called a system function. The system function is how 
a lot of times people will execute system level commands that are that the the program wants to run. Uh, so say you wanted to list the files in a directory or you wanted to write a file or or something else, you can use this system function to run those commands. Now what he notes is that a lot of times uh, developers, if they're not schooled in the art of security, can misuse this command. Uh, perhaps they don't uh, sanitize the input that's coming, especially if it's user-generated input, and it just flows into the system command. So he starts scanning through. He finds over 40 instances of use of this command, and he finds some that are used in a way they probably shouldn't. Then he hits the jackpot, and he finds one that does take user input and doesn't sanitize it. So what does that mean? It means that if he can send a command to this thing, put a semicolon, and then another command, it'll actually execute that command with the privileges that it has, which are root level privileges. So he does that, he runs a whois command, he writes it to a file, and you see that he's able to execute commands as root. And finally, the flipper. This thing's freaking in the news all the time for nefarious stuff. This time, it was a Daily Dot article um, where the NYPD ICB, which is the Intelligence and Counterterrorism Bureau, put out a note that then got relayed by uh, another larger bureau to all the other agencies, noting about the dangers of the flipper. Now, the concern that the NYPD has is that REMVEs, racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists, that's a thing, may use these flippers to do nefarious things, like open up doors they shouldn't that are protected by access control systems, or gates that they shouldn't that are protected by RF remotes, uh, potentially at power substations, which they note these groups tend to gravitate towards for their uh, destructive, uh, I don't know, extremist things they do. Now, the part that struck me about this is that it seems that the concern is the ease of use, which uh, strikes me as odd because as a country, we're uh, perfectly fine with ease of use. The ease of use is incredibly easy on this thing. Anybody can buy one. Anybody can go out and do whatever they want with this thing. And, uh, and there's no protection against the vulnerabilities, which are we're soft and bullets are hard. But apparently, if you make an RF device that can transmit and literally show all of the vulnerabilities in these systems, access control systems that weren't updated, or gate controllers that are 20 years old and just have dip switches that set a code, that's the problem. Uh, personally, I don't want violent extremists having these things. I'm okay if they have flippers. If they have flippers, they might learn about RF programming and everything else and then realize, man, I could get paid a lot doing uh, RF design and perhaps I just shouldn't be a violent extremist anymore. I think the path on the flipper actually has a positive end. I'm not sure what the positive end of this is. So personally, I'm not very concerned if violent extremists have flippers. I am very concerned that we update all these systems that the violent extremists could exploit, or anyone else for that matter. Thanks a lot for watching. You can find me on all the normal places, they're down in the description, and create a wiki account. Share things you're reverse engineering with other people so that we can all learn about it and understand the gate controllers from 20 years ago are vulnerable and perhaps we should update them. Also, if your garage door opener has little dip switches inside the remote that you use to open your door, uh, you should be buying a new one of those. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't fear the flipper.